Well, hi, and welcome to the show. I'm Brenda Bertrand, your host on The Next Steps for Success. Today's really an interesting show because we are going to talk about your dreams, why you are here, and how to fulfill those dreams. And I'm really excited about this topic. And in future shows, I want you to stay tuned. We're going to have a couple guests, a couple dreamers as well, on their journey to fulfilling their goals and their purpose. And we're going to talk to them about how it's been, how the, what challenges they've had, and, and how they've navigated those things. And hopefully that'll be encouragement to you. Also, I've had some questions come in from Facebook, about 20-something questions come in from Facebook, people asking about how to fulfill their purpose, how to fulfill their dreams, what to do when those obstacles come. So I'm going to answer those questions as well. But on today's show, we're going to answer the simple question, what is my purpose? And it's a question every person asks during their life. What is my purpose? How can I fulfill it? Why am I here? So today we are going to address those questions. And my hope is to get you to articulate out loud what your dream is and reveal just a few powerful steps to get you from where you are to where you want to be, to discover and live your purpose. Now it starts from an early age, that curiosity that expresses itself in questions. You know, you start to have kids asking, what's the sun? You know, who, what does it mean to love? What, what, why are ants here? And why did God make cucumbers? And we start to ask these questions over and over and over. You know, why do we have skin? And why do we have, you know, all, all of these things? And as we start to ask those questions, that curiosity starts to be really um, birthed in us. And as children, sometimes that curiosity is um, encouraged and you explore those questions and you look for insights and inspiration and epiphanies. And for some people, those um, questions are not inspired. And so the rest of our lives is a journey of looking for and finding our purpose. And in my work, I help people and groups and organizations really clarify and strengthen their sense of purpose. And we find that knowing your purpose and um, being able to take in that subject, discovering your purpose is um, an essential thing. It's what helps you to be true to yourself and to remember um, what it is to, to really be creative and to be yourself. So a purpose-led life is a blessed life, okay? If I ask you what is your purpose, what would you say? You know, are you still figuring it out? Are you still searching? Are you clear? Well, in this show, let's share a couple of those keys that really, I believe, work. They work, and um, I must emphasize, some of these things that I'm going to share with you, some of these exercises, they can be a bit challenging. They're not just for entertainment. They're really about helping you clarify and move from where you are to where you could, could be, okay? So number one, let's start off. Your purpose is not outside of yourself, okay? So I want you right now to stop chasing, stop looking, stop longing for this thing outside of yourself and start being with yourself. Start connecting consciously to what is in you, the original essence of who you are, and start to actually look within to find out what your purpose is. You know how you discover your real purpose in life? You know, I'm not talking about your job, I'm not talking about your um, responsibilities or even your goals. I mean, the real reason why you're here is that you have to look within to find what that is. So if I sat down with you today, if we just sat down and had a cup of coffee and, you know, I had my water, I would ask you, you know, what is the thing that makes you most passionate, that makes you come alive, okay? And what gives you the most meaning? And that is what is the most important thing. That's what really gets your juices going. And that passion and that purpose and that thing that brings you joy is really the thing that is going to be the thing that pushes you towards that purpose, okay? So it doesn't matter that, that you don't have this very clear, um, consolidated sentence. It's not so much about that. It's about what brings you meaning, okay? And not believing that you don't have a purpose actually prevents you from discovering it. I've had people say, well, Brenda, I don't know what my purpose is. I, I don't know, and I, I won't know, and how can I ever know? And really, that actually, that lack of belief, it actually takes away the gravity. It takes away the thing that will ground you. It prevents you from actually moving forward. And that lack of belief will do yourself a, a real disservice. It actually makes, takes longer for you to discover your, your um, purpose if your first sentence is, I don't know what it is. So tip number one is I want you to start looking within instead of looking without 
for your purpose, okay? So most likely, if you are, if you don't believe that you have a purpose, if you believe that you, you um, are unable to find it, you're actually pushing it away. And if you don't believe that you can really move towards something that's meaningful, you are really creating um, a, a resistance. Here's a story about Bruce Lee, which sets the stage for, um, for an exercise that we're going to do. Master martial artist asked Bruce to teach him everything that Bruce knew about martial arts. So Bruce held up two cups. Both were filled with liquid. The first cup, Bruce said, this represents all of your knowledge about the martial arts. And the second cup, Bruce said, represents all of my knowledge about the martial arts. And if you want to fill your cup with my knowledge, you first need to empty your cup of your knowledge. Okay? So here's the key to that as it relates to emptying and filling. If you want to really discover your purpose, you have to first empty your mind of all of the things that have been resisting, those false things that you've thought of about yourself or those false ideas that you have um, about fulfilling your purpose. The way you discover your purpose is to empty yourself of all of the shoulds and musts and have to. And, and it's the simplest thing that you can do for yourself is to become open. And the more open you are to this process, the more you'll expect it to work and the faster it'll work for you. Um, but not being open, not being emptied is really a, a waste of time um, and, it, and will prevent you from, from working towards really discovering that dream. So point number one is, first and foremost, empty yourself and stop looking outside of yourself. So here's how you do this. Take a blank sheet of paper or open up your, your computer or whatever, some people like to type, and write at the top of it, what is my true purpose in life, okay? And I want you to just keep writing answers. In very short sentences, that's fine, or in long prose. And you just keep doing that until you start to see themes. And at first, it'll be, you know, I don't know. And then it'll be something else. But you know what? Once you start to get down, you'll start to realize that you know more about yourself than you give yourself credit for. Okay? And so when you do this first exercise, which is really about not chasing a dream, but actually embracing your dream, when you start to do that, you're going to find that you know a lot more than you do. So I've, I've met, it doesn't matter what you do for your career. You could be a counselor, you could be an engineer, um, you could do so many different works, you could be a bodybuilder, but to so many, they think a job is about you know, their purpose. And oftentimes, we are in jobs that really have nothing to do with what, purpose, what our purpose is. It would be great if we could um, do a work that is, that is actually our purpose. Some people are like, right now, I am doing something that I feel is very aligned to my purpose. But if you take those 15 to 20 minutes, you're able to really filter through and clear your head um, to, to get rid of the clutter and the conditioning of what you think your purpose has to be, whether it's a job, whether your family went to, all went to law school and you feel like the same has to happen for you. When your true answer finally arrives on this sheet, it will feel like you're coming home. It won't feel like you were chasing some unknown destination or some different source or some different um, ideal entirely. It will be as if you were coming home to yourself and you will know. Now when I did this, this exercise for myself, I actually started looking at some of the, the, the low awareness that I was doing, and it took me a really long time to fill these answers out, you know, more than an hour. But as I persisted and started to really weed through, okay, I got a degree in this, but I don't like it. I did this for a while, but I didn't like it. But what would I really do? After about um, writing down 100 or 200, even maybe 500 answers, you'll be struck by the answer that causes you to come alive, that emotion that makes you know, I found it. That's the first step. And then once you do it, it sounds silly and it may seem silly, and, but do it anyway. As you go through this process, some of your answers are going to be very enlightening to you. You're going to start that, see that they start being very similar. For me, I actually started to relist some of my previous answers because there were so many different tangents, but really they were all coming together. 
my purpose is to empower people to live their purpose. And I do that through television and through public speaking and through coaching. And so once I was able to get all the junk out of my head and stop chasing stuff, and I kept writing, I started to see that there is something happening here. And it all came together. It starts to converge. You start to feel that urge to really start um, putting energy and some life behind it. So let's keep going, let's keep going. So that's number one. So number one is your purpose is not outside of you. That is actually within you, okay? And I want you to really take time, reflect, um, and start, start putting something down on paper. And stop limiting yourself towards what um, you think is actually um, the right answer, okay? So let's keep moving on. So number two, number two, I want to really chat with you about the second step in, in moving forward, okay? You start to find all of these answers and you start looking at um, what you've seen on the paper. You start to see some of the themes that come together. The actual thing is this, all right? You're going to find that you've known all along, but you've been afraid. So number two, we'll start talking a little bit about fear. And I want you to expect fear. I want you to look for fear. I want you to expect it to come knocking at your door. And this is not a bad thing. Fear is actually a friend to you at, ter at certain times, especially in this type of a process, OK? So you start writing down your, your answers. You start looking at these exercises. And before you know it, you start to get excited. And then as soon as you get excited, fear shows up next to you, OK? And here's what fear does. Fear is a really interesting thing. Fear actually teaches us that we should ask questions. That's what fear does. Fear says, you should be worried. And it doesn't always mean that you really have something to worry about. But sometimes fear actually comes and knocks at your door and says, are you really going to leave your job? and you don't have a year's amount of, of income saved up? Are you really going to come and, and, and tell your family that you went to law school and you don't want to be a lawyer? Are you really going to do that? And that's what fear comes and it, it, what it does. Fear just ha asks questions. And instead of letting those questions paralyze you, those questions should really invigorate you to start to go back to that piece of paper and start answering those questions. So when fear comes, what you want to do is start saying, OK, I'm going to book a meeting with myself. And I'm going to explore these questions that are coming up. And from, let's say, 0 to 100, am I feeling fear that is motivating me to be careful? Or am I feeling fear that is motivating me to, to stay paralyzed? Notice how alive you're feeling or how dead you're feeling and identify what would really help. And I tell you, the thing that gets rid of fear the fastest is answering the questions. So let's say you wrote down something on your paper that really inspires you and motivates you to show up each day and to live your purpose and, and to, to really want to dare to be more of who you are. And you start to have joy and the purpose of your life starts to come alive and you start to follow this joyful experience and then fear shows up. Just listen. Ask fear. What are you asking me? What, are you, what, are, what is the problem? And fear may say, you don't have enough money saved up. Don't quit your job yet. I know you're excited, but don't quit your job yet. And instead of being afraid and saying, oh, well, I won't pursue my dream, then you start to say, OK, I won't quit my job right now. When can I quit my job? So you start to ask questions. And you're booking this meeting with yourself to really address the fears. Here's what a lot of people do, OK, is they start to let the fear dictate their process. So they're afraid. They're thinking, you know, I don't know if I can do this. And so what they start to do is move away from the purpose, move away from the dreams, move away from what they found, and they start moving towards the fear. Now here's the thing. If you move towards fear and you start camping out with fear, before you know it, you'll be paralyzed and you won't do anything at all. Fear comes to ask you questions. That's point number two. Take some time with yourself and face the fear and answer the questions that fear brings to you. Now, I know I'm making fear sound like a person, and really it's not. You know, fear is, is not this um, character that comes alive, but it is an emotion that really um, that, that stops people sometimes from moving forward. OK? So at your happiest, what makes you have joy? 
you answer that first, okay? You stop chasing this stuff and you start to reflect on, on what your true purpose is. And as you find that purpose, you need to not be as busy so that you can move forward and actually face that fear and sit down with yourself and start to answer some of those questions, okay? So that's number two. Don't forget, number one was purpose is not outside of yourself. It's within you. So take some time and get it outside of you versus looking for it. The point is to put it outside of you. Secondly, face the fear and answer the questions that fear brings, okay? And busyness, chronic busyness, especially in the area where I live, Washington, D.C., really keeps you away from being purposeful, okay? Being busy can be purposeful and productive, but when you are permanently busy, it is a sure sign that you lack clarity or that you have fear that's driving you or you feel unworthy or you have a lack of faith. So as we go into coaching sessions, I help my clients really create that unique sense of identity that they found. And instead of just writing a, 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 a job or a position, you face the fear and you keep moving forward, you answer those questions. Now number three is where it really, really gets exciting, all right? So the third step as you move forward into um, discovering your purpose, I, there are some things that I want you to do in your, in your third step, okay? So you've put some things down on paper, you've expected fear to show up, and it did, and it brought all its questions with it, and you started to answer those questions. And number three, I want you to start doing something. This is where you, at first, you're going to start looking outside of yourself. You've looked at some of these common traits. So for me, it was helping people live purposeful lives, helping people find meaning, helping people get past fear. I started to see all these things. And then I started to ask myself, well, how can I do this? And I started to say, well, through public speaking, through television, through coaching, through this and that and the other. You know, Then fear showed up. See, we're still going through those steps. Fear showed up and said, well, you're not doing that right now, and that's not what you got your degree in, so what are you going to do? I start to answer those questions. Then the third step was really starting to ask myself, who is doing some of the things that I really think I could or should do? So when you think about your purpose, think about a couple people that you've seen on TV, that you've maybe seen on the internet, that you've seen in different um, venues, and you say to yourself, you know what, I could do that. I know I could do that same exact thing. You know you've seen someone or you've heard of someone, alive or dead, where you thought, I, I probably could do that. You may not have told anyone else, but you definitely have thought it to yourself. And so this is the first step, step three, where you're actually coming outside of yourself because now you're owning something, whether it's I want to be a writer, I want to be a TV personality, I want to have my own business. So you've already claimed that thing, and now you're bringing that thing out into the world and finding who your tribe is. You're going to find who are other people that are just like me that have those similar qualities, those similar goals that are way ahead of me, and they're pursuing these dreams. OK, who are those people? So for me, of course you know Oprah was one of those people because she was changing lives and she was doing it on television. Now notice I didn't say, you know, Brian Gumbel. And there's nothing wrong with Brian Gumbel, but he's a news presenter. He's presenting news. And I didn't want to present news. I wanted to change lives and help people find their purpose, and I want to use television doing it. So Oprah Winfrey was one of those people for me. And there were some others as well that I started to really look at and start to, to say, you know what, these are some people who are doing what I'm doing. And the reason why you do that is because now you're trying to really identify what steps does it really take to get there. Now be warned, there are steps that some people take, like Oprah, she didn't go to college, she didn't finish college, and she, there were certain things that she did that I didn't do, et cetera. So you're not gonna follow their path, but what this does for you, this is so important, is it silences fear, because now you'll see that someone did it and they survived. Because <laughs> what fear does is fear makes you think, if you leave your job, or if you start your own company, or if you try this thing, or whatever, you're going to be the first, and you're going to flop on your face, and you're going to fail. But being able to take your dream and to come and look outside and see that the world is full of people who have done this before will really encourage you.
So when I saw the Oprahs and I saw how poor she was and how she went through all of that, didn't have a degree for a long time, and, and even became one of the first um, African-American anchor women in, in, in her particular market at the time. And then she was the first woman to have her own, you know, to, to buy her own show. And when I started to see someone's done it before, and I started to really compile a list of some of those heroes and sheroes, it was so encouraging to me. And it really silenced the fear that says you're going to die trying to follow your dream. You're not going to die following your dream. You're actually going to live, and you're going to have abundant life, and you're going to have great joy. So step number three is taking your dream that you've really gathered. It doesn't have to be specific. It doesn't have to be grand. It just needs to be yours. So you gather that dream, and then you go and you start to find others that have done it before. And that encourages you and sets your heart on fire. So the last step, here's the last step, and this is where we start to get into a lot of the action planning. So I'm not telling you to quit your job, and a lot of people, they really want me to give them a plan of how to quit their job, and I wish I could do that for you, but everyone's gonna be different. But you are armed with three things right now. You're armed with this information that you've gathered, you know, t finding from within yourself and putting it on paper, and then secondly, you're armed with the, the idea of getting um, away from fear by facing it, by answering those questions. And then third, you found some people who've gone ahead of you and have, have, different, have expressed this purpose and passion in different ways. So the last thing is this, make a small step, one small step. So if your goal is, I wanna be a TV personality and I wanna help people change their lives by using television, What's one small step you can make this week to get you one step closer to that? And I can tell you right now, sitting home and dreaming about it is not going to get you one step closer, right? So it may be calling someone at a local television station and asking them what their process was. Two, it might be joining a local community public access station like I have, and you're starting your own show. That's something that you can do for free or for very, very little money. Or the next step could be calling a friend who's in television and asking them if there's some opportunities. So really, taking one small step or one big leap is up to you. Now, I know people who have quit their jobs and they have followed their dreams. And some have made it, and some have had to, to go back and find other positions. And then I know other people who have taken one small step, and each small step made a huge difference towards a great dream. So your challenge for this week is to do this. Get it down on paper. Stop chasing it. Stop looking for it. Stop doubting it. Get it on paper. Get whatever you know out on paper, because you know more than you think you do. Number two, I want you to not run from fear. I want you to run towards fear, and I want you to face it. What is fear asking you to do? What is fear asking you to be careful of? Answer those questions, and that way you can get beyond fear and realize fear is there to help you and not to hurt you. Third, I want you to find other people who have done what you're doing as close to it as possible. If you're totally a Renaissance person and you can't find anyone else, then find someone as close as possible, alive or dead. If they're dead, read their biography and see what, get inspired by the stories of other people. And then last but not least, I want you to go ahead and make a small step or a big leap. This is very simple, very common sense. If you want to get a degree, if that's your dream, common sense, next small step is to go and find some colleges, order some catalogs, look online at some of the degree options. The next small step may be to call an admissions counselor and do that. Take a small step and make one step every day or three times a week or once a week. Challenge yourself that this year you're going to move from where you are closer to where you could be because you know so much more than you'll give yourself credit for. So I hope you are ready to follow your dreams. I'm so excited. I could talk about this all day long. And I, I really am, I want to encourage you. We have a couple other shows coming up where I'm going to answer your Facebook questions. Really excited about that because the questions are really intense. But then also I'll have a couple people on the show who are dreamers, who are following their dreams. And they actually did those steps that I'm telling you. We all follow those steps or we all ignore those steps. So I want to encourage you, follow your dreams. Make a decision today that this year you're going to do something in the direction of your, your faith and away from the direction of your fears, and that you will live a purposeful and meaningful life. 
And any way that I can help, feel free to email me or to go to my website, and that information is right here on the screen. So we're trying to take um, all of the mystery out of success and make it as simple as possible. And for Next Steps to Success, I'm Brenda Bertrand signing off, and I hope you have a great day and a great year. Follow your dreams.